Welcome to this video on inverters which are central to online and hybrid PV systems. On this channel Synergy Files we aim to inspire budding engineers for a better more sustainable world so please do subscribe to the channel. Coming up in this video we will look at the following topics. Number one we will introduce you to inverters. Number two we will look at off-grid and grid tie inverters. Number three we will look at pure sine wave and modified sine wave inverters. Number four, we'll look at low frequency and high frequency inverters. Number five, we will look at MPPT and PWM charge inverters. And lastly, we will look at the efficiency of inverters. Recently, as solar PV systems have come to the fore, there is a great interest in inverters today than there ever was. In almost all PV systems, it is the central component that binds the whole system together. Therefore, having high reliability of an inverter is paramount as it is the component that is most likely to fail other than the batteries. The functionality of an inverter is much higher today than it was 10 years ago. The main function of an inverter is to convert DC current into AC current. Inverters come in all shapes and sizes. They are classified mainly on the power rating or their throughput. For example, there are small inverters available that can convert the output from a car battery to run an AC appliance. On the other hand, there are large inverters that convert the output from a whole solar farm. For domestic consumers, inverters are available with power ratings of 500 to 10,000 watts or 10 kilowatts. Similarly, inverters are also classified based on the input that they accept. That is, they can accept 12 volt DC, 24 volt DC, 48 or even 96 volt DC. Note that 48 volt DC input is the most common type of inverter used for residential solar PV systems, while 12 volt DC input inverters are more commonly used in portable applications. Power inverters in solar farm can also have input voltages from 300 volt DC to 450 volt DC. Now that we have introduced inverters, let's have a look at the most common question asked about them. That is, what is the difference between an off-grid inverter and an on-grid inverter? Well, an off-grid inverter is a product that works completely isolated from the grid. It has no provision to tap into the grid electricity or feed electricity to the grid. Normally, if a PV system is designed with an off-grid inverter, then the panels are connected with the charge controller. The charge controller is connected to the batteries. The batteries are then connected with an off-grid inverter. Off-grid inverters can also be made for portable use while grid-tied inverters cannot. Therefore, inverters that are labeled for use in caravans and motorhomes are off-grid inverters. A grid tie inverter on the other hand can be directly connected to the solar array and the grid. There is also sometimes charge control option in the grid tie inverter and therefore some variants can also be connected to the battery pack. In other words, a grid tie inverter can become the central component of a PV system. The advantage of using a grid tie inverter is that it can feed excess electricity to the grid and take advantage of net metering. Grid tie inverters are more expensive because of this additional functionality. Grid tie inverters can also be used without batteries. Some grid tie inverters have the added functionality of shutting down the PV system in case of a power outage. This is done to prevent islanding, that is grid tie inverters ensure that in the event of a blackout, it will shut down to prevent the energy it transfers from harming any line workers who are sent to fix the power grid. The advantages of grid tie inverter are as follows. Number one, it ensures a smooth power to the load. That is, it has the ability to top up from either the grid or the battery bank in case the panels are not producing enough to meet the load. Number two, it can charge the batteries using energy from the grid, provided grid charger option is inbuilt. This feature is very useful when the batteries are drained and the panels are not producing enough. And number three, it can feed to the grid when the panels are producing extra amount of energy. 
Now let's have a look at pure sine wave and modified sine wave inverters. There are two different kinds of output that an inverter may furnish. The first one is called pure sine wave and the second one is called a modified sine wave. The modified sine wave inverters are much cheaper than pure sine wave inverters and that is because they have less circuitry and modified sine waves inverter use transistors that act as switch and they basically turn on and off the current to create a staircase pulse or a square wave. Appliances that use a output from modified sine wave tend to overuse power and run hotter and thus inefficiently. Pure sine wave inverters on the other hand run electrical appliances much smoother. Appliances run without buzz or his sound. Now let's have a look at low frequency and high frequency inverters. Inverters can be classified into two categories based on the speed of the operation of transistor switches in their commutator circuit. The categories are namely low frequency inverters and high frequency inverters. A low frequency inverter has several advantages but it is more expensive and because of the presence of massive iron core in its transformer, it is also much bigger and heavier compared to high frequency counterpart. Often difficult loads that require high surge at the beginning such as motors, compressors or pumps are very well managed by low frequency inverter. Field effect transistors in low frequency inverters can operate cooler in part due to the slower frequency of switching required to produce AC power. In a high frequency inverter there are almost twice the number of components compared to low frequency inverters. Nonetheless they are still smaller and lighter overall because of the absence of a large central transformer. They are not very well equipped to handle industrial loads. And therefore, if a large pump, a motor, or an air conditioner is required to be run, then a low frequency inverter is a better option. High frequency inverter application is appropriate for a wide variety of uses like tools, battery chargers, small appliances, AV, and computers. High frequency inverters make up the large majority of inverters available in the retail market. High frequency inverters are also available in lower power categories such as 300, 600,000 and 1500 watts etc. as opposed to low frequency inverters with their power levels normally within thousands, typically 2000 to 3000 watts. Now let's look at MPPT and PWM charger inverters. A solar inverter is different from a normal inverter in that it has a charge controller built into it. Therefore, inverters used by solar systems also come with either MPPT or PWM option. The MPPT functionality allows more power to be drawn out of the solar panels. This is done by keeping the panels output close to the maximum power point of the panels. Inverters with MPPT functionality are more expensive than PWM option. It has been noted experimentally that overall MPPT can make the solar energy system up to 20% more efficient. The PWM option on the other hand is a good low cost solution for small systems only when the solar cell temperature is moderate to high that is between 45 degree centigrade to 75 degree centigrade. PWM inverters prefer unshaded irradiance on the panel and tend not to work very efficiently if the panel is shaded. Now let's touch upon the efficiency of inverters. Losses are expected whenever we are dealing with energy conversion process. Similarly, when we convert DC electricity to AC electricity, there will be losses. As of July 2009, most grid tie inverters available on the market have peak efficiencies of over 94% and some as high as 96%. The energy loss during conversion process is mostly heat. And this concludes the video on inverters. If you learned from it, please do like it and do share it. Thank you for your time and attention.